North Korea, one of the most tightly controlled countries in the world. Looking across the border from South Korea, it's difficult to imagine living in a place where all the news comes from a single source, where there's no internet, and where listening to an alternative point of view can lead to a death sentence. Officially still at war, barbed wire has divided these two countries for 60 years, but there's one thing that travels unrestricted over the border, radio. Now we begin the English language transmission from Pyongyang, the capital of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. In opening your main chorus, song of General Kim Jong-il. The airwaves above the 38th parallel are abuzz with activity. From the totalitarian north comes propaganda-heavy state broadcasts, while more than 10 stations in the south target North Korea with independent news, religion and propaganda of their own. Propaganda radio isn't new. Its roots go back to World War II and stations like Radio Tokyo. Hello, you fighting orphans of the Pacific? Radio Tokyo hoped to influence American troops in the Pacific, and while its success was limited, it and stations like it sparked the use of radio as a way to reach across borders. Such broadcasts reached a peak during the Cold War. You are listening to radio station Peace and Progress, broadcasting the voice of Soviet public opinion. Satellite TV and the internet are gradually putting an end to these programs in most of the world, but they're not available to citizens in North Korea, so radio remains an important tool. Open Radio for North Korea puts out an hour of news and information programming each day from a studio in downtown Seoul. North Korea is the most isolated place in the world. Uh, people, uh, people don't know uh, what about what's happening out, outside of North Korea. Is only just brainwashed by what the the regime uh, wants wants them to believe. Ha used to help North Korean refugees along the Chinese border, but turned to radio after realizing people in the north were just as much starved of information as they were food. North Korea, as you may know, well, the, there is no internet people can use. So I found that the radio is the most effective tool for North Korean people to get the information from outside. But listening to the stations isn't as easy as tuning the dial. Radios in North Korea come fixed to state broadcasts and must be registered with the local police. This woman is a defector. She didn't want to be identified because of the possible repercussions it could have on friends and family still in North Korea. A former doctor in the country, she fled two years ago. She was careful because of the potential punishment. As a doctor, it could have been severe. But increasingly, people are risking imprisonment and tuning into foreign broadcasts, according to the stations. Radios with unrestricted tuning are making their way into the country across North Korea's border with China. Potential penalties for having such radios remain severe, but as North Korea's economy has weakened, it's become easier to bribe officials. Today, it's estimated that around 5% of the population listen to foreign broadcasts. Seoul, the capital of South Korea, and home to more than 10 million people. This busy, bustling metropolis lies 50 kilometers from the border and is within easy reach of North Korea's powerful medium-wave radio transmitters. But tune along the AM band and there's not a North Korean voice to be heard. Where there should be North Korean radio, there's this. What you're listening to is radio jamming. South Korea deliberately broadcasts this noise on medium wave channels occupied by North Korean radio so they can't be heard in Seoul. 
The jamming has been going on for decades on both sides of the border and is another aspect of this battle of the airwaves across the 38th parallel. The South's jamming is largely restricted to easy to receive AM broadcasts, but in North Korea the situation is very different. The regime's total control on domestic media make foreign voices a potentially destabilizing force, so the jamming operation is much larger in scale. Barely visible in this picture, taken just a few meters from the border at Panmunjom, is a transmitter mast in North Korea. It's one of several used to jam stations, an operation that's recently been getting bigger. 어, 특히나 최근 들어서 이제 2005년 이후에 민간 방송들이 생기면서 이 북한 당국의 입장에서는 더욱 더 강하게 방해 전파를 발사를 해오고 있다. 어, 그렇게 말씀드릴 수 있을 것 같습니다. Jamming is a power intensive business. A strong signal is needed to effectively block a broadcast and electricity shortages are a major problem in the north. 좀 어쩔 수 없이 그렇게 선택할 수밖에 없게 된게 아닌가? 그리고 북한 당국의 입장에서도 워낙에 그 대북 방송들이 많이 늘어나다 보니까 방해 전파를 발사해야 되는 주파수도 상당히 많이 늘어났겠죠. The supply shortages and increase in stations has necessitated North Korea to get more selective in its jamming and allow some information through. Free North Korea! It's early May and this is Imjingak, about four kilometers from the North Korean border. Human rights activists and defectors are here to send bagfuls of leaflets, DVDs, money and radios to North Korea. Helium-filled balloons will carry them across the border and timers will release their propaganda cargo. We've been sending in balloons with radios and money to pump up the private markets that have developed in North Korea and messages from the North Korean defectors and also from the American people of true history and information about the outside world. There are several such launches a year, and activists are sure they're working. We know from talking to defectors that the balloon launches have reached areas, uh, but I think the most effective indicator that this is powerful is that the regime has protested vehemently against these launches. So that tells us that the information is getting, getting to the people. Just how upset do they get? In late May, South Korea's government restarted propaganda broadcasts along the border that are targeted at North Korean soldiers and immediately drew the ire of the North. If the South side continues to scatter leaflets and resumes even broadcasting for psychological warfare, we will be followed immediately by tough countermeasures of our army, including fiscal action. The effectiveness of the radio broadcasts on the public is difficult to gauge, especially in North Korea. No one knows how many people illicitly listen late at night through the static and the jamming to get a wider view of the world, something that we all take for granted. Reporting from the 38th Parallel, Martin Williams, IDG News Service.